Hello everyone, Assalamu alaikum. We have just arrived to Malaysia a couple of weeks ago and this time is very interesting because we are going to focus on CFFRC, Crops for Future Research Center, the first research center in the world working on underutilized crops. And they are working into different sectors related to sustainability. One of those sectors is how to connect the local farmers in Africa with the local farmers in Asia and to get a new crop variety to cultivated in Asia to be more resistant against climate change and water stress. In the other way, they are working into other sectors like Fresh Plus and the crop and how to design a sustainable supply chain uh, from the beginning till the end to, to, be, to have highly efficiency and uh, to use the concept of recycling and reduce the food waste and use the available resources in a right way. So we did very interesting interviews with many experts in CFFRC and we are going to show you apart from the interview that we did during the last three weeks. So let's go to see it. Okay, so BAM Yield is um, one, of the six, one of six research programs we have in uh, Crops for Future Research Center. And it's focused around, um, initially around Bambara groundnut, which is an African indigenous legume, which is quite drought tolerant. But it's also grown in a wide range of areas. So it's actually grown in Indonesia and Malaysia and Thailand as well. So one of the ideas behind the program is really to, to start making those cross-regional links between researchers, between farmers, between processors and end users. And the focus initially on Bambara groundnut is a way of trying to understand how we do these sorts of things. So we'll try to learn from what works in Bambara groundnut, we'll try to learn from what progress we make, and we'll also apply it to other legumes, to other crops. And the core of BAM yield is really developing a multi-locational, multi-country uh, breeding program to try to actually develop some of these crops because many of these crops are basically grown as land races. They're mixtures of genotypes. They've been grown for millennia by farmers, but they've not been improved in a scientific way. And I think one of the things that we can potentially do is actually look at a much more scientific approach based on multi-locational data, based on particular genotypes to understand the traits that are good in these particular crops, but also to improve them so they can go back to the farmer's field and provide provide more consistent and more reliable yields. The problem about climate change that we are talking about in Malaysia is nothing new for people who live in Africa. They face six to nine months a year where there's no rain. So many of their farming system, their cropping systems are used this drought and we can actually borrow from their experience of how to cope with dry weather, with hot weather and uh, even some of the species. For example, some of the uh, patterns of the oil palm came from that part of Africa. So potentially, our oil palm also can be adapted to the hot and dry conditions that we can expect the next 50 to 100 years. And uh, many of our Malaysian species, in fact, are not so well adapted. You take the durian here behind me, the durian is used to a rainforest condition. They are not adapted. And therefore, if the rain stops for several months, it's very likely they have a massive negative effect on the, oil, on the durian. And uh, the durian may not be the most suitable choice. Other species in the rainforest, which are adapted to shade and so on, would also suffer. Species like the banana, the ginger, which are native to our rainforests, would experience very different conditions. So we can learn from these and use what are the special traits of the dryland species from Africa 
and even borrow some of the species for testing them in the future climate of Malaysia. So for food security, we are looking at species which have very wide distribution. Take for example, Moringa. Moringa stretches from the foothills of Himalayas to the Sahara deserts to South Africa. They are widely adapted. They can grow in cool, dry, hot condition. So these species will eventually be the most adapted when we come to future climate. There are many other underutilized species which we can see in uh, most of Africa, the dry, dryland Africa, and they have been used by traditional people to adapt to extremes in their climate. When the temperature and the uh, drought gets worse, it is not possible to adapt just by improving with a new variety. We need a suite of species species that can give like an insurance when the weather become extreme like intercropping, agroforestry these are very very important coping mechanisms for local people in Africa so we can also borrow what they have been exper experimenting for thousands of years At the moment we are too dependent on main staple crops uh, and they are not uh, giving us the, the sort of uh, micronutrient that we need in, in our diet. So, but I also uh, spend time to look at you know, what do we throw away you know, from, from the food that we process or that we grow and how can we re reuse those uh, uh, waste that we throw away into something useful or beneficial either to the farm or to the environment or to the economy. Uh, when we look at the uh, various crop or, or, or waste or, or look into waste management, we look at the whole value chain or the supply chain of each item of each crop so that uh, we are able to uh, look at the gaps where there are gaps in where this, this uh, supply chain is not efficient, you know, where there will be a lot of waste. So the key thing here is to reduce waste but at the same time recycle waste. You know. These are the two key issues that you can help to improve the environment, which can also improve the, uh, the, the production of crops or the, uh, or the, or the farm uh, performance. Isn't it? So that is the, basically you know, uh, what we spend time to look at. And so at Crops for the Future Research Centre, one of the programmes is called System Plus. And uh, the idea of System Plus is to be able to characterise and look at the system at some different levels. And so we're trying to stretch from the cropping system where we could look at individual plants or even at the cells in those plants or even at the genetics of those plants, but we're choosing to look at the crops within a field. And we're saying, can we compare how the production would be if you have crops then planted together or alone? So when we talk about monocropping, it means that one crop is being grown year after year after year in the same field with no rotation or anything. And this is not very good for the land. We often talk about uh, nutrient mining and say that that's what we're doing in this situation. So we campaigning for uh, multi-cropping systems where you would have some intercropping. And the main intercropping that is really beneficial is where you would have a cereal and a legume. So you'll have two crops that have some different height parameter and different leaf size and different root depth. And so they complement each other in that uh, system. So if we move from intercropping and we go a little bit up the time scale and, and scale of, of land, then we would say each farmer has a certain portion of land and this would be his farm. And so if we come to farm level and with a system, then we need to be able to bring in a whole lot of different factors. So here, not only would it be considering the season, but it would also then be considering multiple seasons because a man is not going to only work on the farm for one season. And uh, we also have to consider that that human being who is the manager, many times in Africa again, it's a woman farmer. 
um, they are in control of their whole farm system. So how do they bring things from different parts or different enterprises or products? So can they bring manure or something like that from uh, the cattle and bring it into the field? Or can they use the stover at the end of the maize crop to be able to do mulching around some other kind of a fruit crop or one of the brassicas or cabbages or something like that. And so we, we're trying to look then at that level of the interactions at many different uh, systems. We are all relying on fossil fuel, which is a, uh, what you call a depleting resource as well as a polluting resource. And, and we should actually start looking at some renewable resource and that uh, of, all, of a number of resources, it looks like biomass, uh, bioma biomaterials would be a good source of uh, renewable energy. Uh, basically, if you use either the biomass from waste or from crops, they are basically energy that is harnessed from the sun and you can now use it directly to provide energy. And that, uh, well, in as far as this country is concerned, uh, the biomass is produced mainly from the palm oil industry. Okay. Uh, well, it's supposed to be produced from the palm oil industry using the waste from the oil palms when they, when they uh, what they call, try to process it in the palm oil. And perhaps 90 90% And uh, But uh, there are issues in using this uh, so-called uh, palm oil biomass. Uh, in terms of logistics, and even then, even though we are uh, able to do it, it can at most substitute maybe 5% of the uh, energy uh, requirements. So we are thinking that, uh, you know, the, uh, there's still a lot of space within the 5 million hectares of oil palms in the country, where we can plant other crops, and especially so-called underutilized crops, or even utilized crops, the waste from the utilized crops uh, can be used to also to add on to the uh, biomass fit stock for renewable energy. And the, uh, the whole idea also is not just the uh, using this uh, the biomass for biofuel, which usually it uh, tends to be at least at the moment still cheap. Uh, the whole idea is also to produce so-called more green chemicals, biochemicals from uh, biomass. So making it again another renewable resource because all the so-called industrial chemicals at the moment are also derived from petroleum industry. Fish Plus is the only one looking at uh, a different uh, product, in our case uh, fish of all different kinds. Uh, with the ob main objective of Fish Plus is to improve the aqua feeds that are being used in the aquaculture industry. So, one of the things that has not been done uh, so far is to include in the, uh, the aqua feed underutilized crops, uh, with the main ones being used in other places for different species where they've tried to replace fish meal. Uh, are wheat, uh, soybean, uh, those kind of uh, mass-produced, uh, in some cases more expensive uh, crops. Here in Malaysia, there is a lot of there are a lot of uh, underutilized crops which uh, could, if they were in included in the aqua feed, provide uh, the fish with a, an improved nutritional. Uh, balance with uh, some fish in particular which don't have a particularly high uh, protein requirement uh, it would be possible to not just partially but hopefully in the future completely replace fish meal with uh, plant-based proteins. Finally I hope you enjoyed our video today in Malaysia and next time we are going back to Italy to start a new series of videos about sustainability so don't forget to follow our page on Facebook, Sustainable Future, and see you soon.